I bet many of us have been dreaming about finally being able to somewhat decently and smoothly play AAA games with one CPU's integrated graphics, that is if the CPU in question even has an iGPU. In today's test, Intel's new integrated graphics solution of their 12th gen CPUs, also known as Alder Lake. Is the graphics unit any good, or are we yet again to experience a poor gaming experience? As far as this topic is concerned, I have both good and bad news for you. In this video, I'll unusually for me not let any charts do the talking for me, but instead I will show you directly on the monitor what the gaming experience looks and feels like. Before that, however, I'd like to kindly thank Yorgios over at the hardware shop Equipper for getting a hold on the CPU for my videos. Hashtag not sponsored. I paid for all this out of my own pocket. I'd like to address one thing first though, since many, including myself in the past, have stated that Intel could or should just ditch their integrated graphics altogether. As a matter of fact, there are such models available for us to buy. You just go and grab a SKU with the ending letter F and you're good to go. However, the strengths of integrated Intel graphics for years don't lie in gaming, but instead, thanks to quick sync encoding and decoding in aspects such as rendering and the like. This is where the iGPU usually plays out its strengths. Playing actual games with that technology, in the past at least, could only be considered mediocre at best. Well, except for slightly dated games. But maybe this will finally change, especially since Intel is apparently planning on releasing high-performance desktop graphics cards fairly soon. The goal for today's video is to find a compromise between playability, thus a sufficiently high enough frame rate, and graphics detail. And one more time, I have to step on the brake here, because Intel Alder Lake graphics can't and should not be generalized. The different models, for instance, Core i3, i5, i7, and i9 for that matter, come with slightly different specifications regarding their integrated graphics. While the 12900K, 12700K, as well as 12600K share the same UHD graphics 770, we witness slight differences in GPU clock speed. Those cheaper 12400 and 12100 CPUs, on the other hand, come equipped with noticeably cut down iGPUs, namely UHD graphics 730. The important thing here is the amount of execution units EUs, which have been cut down from 32 to 24. So my plan was to neither showcase the best nor worst possible scenario of the new Intel graphics, therefore I deliberately chose to go with the i5 12600K for this video. So without further ado, let's start with something presumably easier, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I first want to try things out at a screen resolution of Full HD 1080p. DirectX 12 being disabled and the remaining graphic settings down at their very minimum. What immediately is impossible to not notice is the unpleasant graphics bug. Lara usually doesn't pick that kind of flamboyant outfit to start her adventures. But still, about 20 FPS on average is not a catastrophe other than I initially expected. So let's try out our classic 720p. Immediately things look a lot different, literally much more pixelated, but that way we could drive the frame rate up to slightly past the 30 FPS mark. Let's try out the next title going by the name of Horizon Zero Dawn, for now at 1080p2 at lowest settings. If we are lucky, there are up to 15 FPS witnessable. Far from a truly pleasant gaming experience, which is why we need to bring back our old friend 720p once more. This definitely improves things, on average a gain of 10 FPS. So let's jump into the next game on our list, Borderlands 3. Again we start at 1080p, with the remaining settings unbelievably low. I would have expected much less frames per second here, but maybe I'm just getting used to all that lag. We are achieving roughly 17 FPS here. A slightly underwhelming boost in frame rate can be seen at 720p. Nonetheless, the game is certainly running a bit smoother. Next up is Forza Horizon 5. As a start, let's do 1080p at very low settings again. 
Finally, we are being greeted by a more positive result for once, especially considering this is one of the more recent game titles. We are almost hitting the magical 30 FPS mark, which many consider to be the first real checkpoint of playable. So I guess it's time to squeeze out even a little more. 720p certainly does make the game look very grainy, and that does maybe hamper the gaming fun, but at least rejoice, 40 to 41 FPS. A pretty hard hitting game for graphics cards, needless to say, is Red Dead Redemption 2. So get ready to lower your expectations drastically. The settings are dirt low. 15 to 16 FPS is what you get to witness on your high horses. Of course, you are also getting some of that nice screen tearing action. At a resolution of 720p, we are almost gaining a whole horsepower and almost, just almost, scratch the 30 FPS mark. We do lose a ton of detail though. Things should however look good in the following title, GTA 5. While the settings are down at their minimum, even at 1080p we easily get to 50 FPS or even higher. A nice change for once. For the sake of completeness, I wanted to see what can be achieved at 720p here. Now let's stop for a second and look at those beautiful 85 FPS on average. That sure is impressive, but then again it's an older title, yet still very popular. So let's head off to a more recent game, Far Cry 6. Once again full HD at super low settings. And here we are being greeted with some sort of Christmas lighting. What a feast of artifacts. If you plan on plowing through the game like that, expect about 15 FPS. Well, only for so long, the game won't take it for all that long and will eventually crash. Still, let's stick to Ubisoft for a little longer. Needless to say, with comparable low graphics details. 12 to 13 FPS aren't that nice though. Unfortunately, a resolution of 720p won't help us out of our miserable mud puddle that much either. Nevertheless, in the loneliest of lonely landmarks, we might occasionally hit 20 FPS. I guess one has to face it and become a peaceful viking for once. Of course, I couldn't leave out the graphics card killing title Cyberpunk 2077. Needless to say, I turned all those graphics details down as low as I possibly could, and yet we are given the chance to cruise around with 10 frames per second. It's a much smoother ride at 720p of course. No doubt, unpleasant may be the word of the day, but at least we do have control that way to some extent in-game. There is no room for secrets though, which is why I'll tell you right away that some games will not even launch or in the best case will crash fairly early on. In my case that was the case with Metro Exodus. I do have to make it very clear though that I have a strong feeling my Gigabyte motherboard did actually hinder what could have been achieved. I couldn't assign an optimal amount of memory to the iGPU. We surely would have seen slightly better results in some of these scenarios. So the bottom line here is, as advanced Intel's integrated graphics unit may be, there's undoubtedly still not enough power behind it to drive modern or even a few years old AAA games properly. Some games won't even load correctly. To be fair though, it wasn't really Intel's intention to deliver a gaming miracle of any kind with their integrated graphics solution. It's mainly targeted towards multimedia and rendering workloads. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this slightly different type of video by me. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time.